watch the news It makes me cry For all of the anger I see So many souls Believing the lie That hatred is all they can be So I take the chance to offer my prayer to whisper the truth and I believe today is the day that my message gets through that we are all children of the God of love and we are becomes where do we start and how do we heal so much pain the answer is clear we open our hearts and let love wash away every stain because peace in our time begins with a smile with an open hand when we teach by example, the world is sure to understand that we are all children of the God of love. And we are all meant to be instruments. No us or them for a friend we are all the same there is only one cause everyone is born with God's name Sometimes it seems so useless to try, so futile to dream. Oh, but remember, the power of creation lies in what we believe. Because we are all children of We'd like to welcome you to our midweek service. My name is Pastor Robert Bright, and we're here at Unity Church of Oklahoma. And we just heard uh, Jody Bagley sing this wonderful song, knowing that we are part of God's love, God, part of God's perfect plan of 
creating peace in our universe. We are so grateful that we have been able to have this time to gather together. And this service, um, this midweek service, is a little bit unique in that we're going to have two testimonies today in lieu of a regular message that we normally have. Donna Rodriguez, uh, part of our music program, a part of our uh, uh, arts program uh, here at Unity Church of Oklahoma for many years is going to be offering uh, her thoughts, her testimony, as well as our own Reverend Vi Davis. So we're really excited that these two uh, souls have converged in this spot to share their truth today. We're also blessed with Kathy Richmond, who will be giving our daily word. And of course, you just heard Jody Bagley. Uh, with the beautiful sounds that come from him. We're going to begin this part, of the cer- this part of the service, not ceremony, service, with a word of prayer. So would you join me, please? We give thanks to you, Mother, Father, God, for your presence that is all around us, that is a part of us, that it never leaves us, that is eternal in our souls. We thank you for this time to come together to uplift our spirits, to reconnect with you and with the truth of our being. We are thankful for this time of celebration. We are thankful for this time of growth in our lives, and we are thankful for this community. We lift this up and accept your good in this moment in time, in the name and in the nature of Jesus Christ. Amen. My name is Kathy Richmond, and I'm here with today's daily word for our midweek service. Our words today are pray for others. I am blessed as I pray for others. When I pray for others, I am blessing them with words of affirmation and loving care. I too am blessed by my positive, uplifting words as I release them from my mind into the mind and the heart of God. Using my prayer time to focus on the needs and the desires of the people in my life fulfills me as I share prayers of peace, prosperity, freedom, and faith. Praying for others also frees me from worry as I envision the highest and best outcomes unfolding in the lives of those for whom I pray. I hold unshakable faith that their good is now on its way to them. The sincerity of my prayers energizes me and raises my spirits. I feel happy as I envision those that I care about abundantly being blessed in so many ways. The scripture today is from Ephesians. I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. Thank you. God bless. Good morning. My name is Donna Rodriguez, and I'm going to give a little testimony of my experience with this wonderful church. Almost 40 years ago, I wasn't involved in any church. I was just living my life and trying to get by. And one night, about midnight, I drove right down the street. And before this sanctuary was here, just the little church was there next door. This was a big, empty lot. And all that was here was that beautiful Tiffany window standing in the middle of an empty lot with a light shining on it. And I thought, wow, that was really interesting. So I pulled off. I stopped. I got out, and I stared at the window, and I just thought it was amazing out in the middle of this cold night just looking at this beautiful window of course not knowing that I would have anything to do with this church years later I just loved the window so time passed and I was married and my husband left and I was going through some very sad times and I had a a little girl and I figured you know this is time my husband left it was time that I needed to think about what I wanted to do to give some stability to myself and my daughter. Mostly it was I wanted to get my daughter involved in some kind of church. My next door neighbor and I had been talking quite a bit and she said, and I had been going now about a year to Al-Anon before this discussion, and she told me, I think I have a church for you that you would like to go to. 
I really think it would be right up your alley and something you would really enjoy. And interestingly, it was not the church she attended. She attended a Methodist church just down the street from here. But because of my background and what was going on in my life, she sent me here. So I brought my six-year-old, we came to church here, and it was something different for me. I had been baptized Catholic many years before, but had not been to church. But instead of going there, I came here. And I would call that divine appointment because it brought me where I needed to be. Uh, so when we came here, there was a person, a wonderful woman in charge of the youth. Her name was Cookie. And my daughter had some issues. She was going through quite a lot of, uh, some depression with her dad gone and some other issues going on, starting school and just being with me for a change and just the two of us. And this person, had she not been here, it would have been a whole different experience. But she took over with my daughter and she was able to steer her, comfort her, give her some protection, stability. It was wonderful. And after having gone here then after a few months, it was just obviously a positive, uplifting, very stable atmosphere. And I thought I was doing it for my daughter, but it turned out I was doing it for me too. And the really interesting thing after all that, about a year later, my daughter was about seven, and we were sitting in the living room at night, and I was very sad about something that had happened, and I was crying, and she sat next to me, and she said, Mom, it's okay, because tomorrow is a new day, and you can start all over. And I knew I had been to my home. This was my home, and this is where I'd stay, and it's been 33 years. Hi. Hi. My name is Reverend Vi Davis, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to watch us this morning, watch this program. Uh, I've been asked how unity has affected my life and how it has changed it. And it's very difficult for me to say that because I started so long ago. Um, I, I had not been a God person God wasn't part of my life. Uh, I didn't know much about God except what I heard, and I didn't like that God. So, But I did go to church as a kid. I went to church with whoever was my best friend. So I've been to almost every religion there is, including the Catholic. And I would go because of the fun things they did, uh, but I never caught on to God. That was out of my uh, mind or my thought. So I was kind of surprised at myself five years after I got involved in Unity that I had ever done this. And then I realized that God had something for me to do. And it didn't make any difference in the beginning whether I wanted to do it or not. And it's interesting how we get into these, the spiritual practice. The way I got in was with my little daughter. She was four. I was a single mother. My, I lived with my mother. And uh, my uncle and aunt would come over quite often. And I could hear them talk about this thing they called unity. And from somewhere came the idea that my four-year-old daughter needed Sunday school. And although this group was very small, and I'd never heard of anything that they talked about, I decided this was the best place to take my daughter for Sunday school. So. I took her that day, and, and I uh, was going to drop her off and come back and get her because she needed Sunday school. I didn't need anything. So I walked in, and I met the minister, and I introduced myself, and I told her who my mother was. She took my hand, and she said, Oh, I know your mother. Come right in. And so that was my beginning. And I would go every Sunday, 
uh, taking Ann, and some Sundays I had, well, Saturdays, I'd been out quite late that night, and so on Sunday morning I was very sleepy, and I would fall asleep during the service. Now, it was very obvious to the minister that I had fallen asleep because it was very small. And she said to me one day, Vi, it's okay if you fall asleep during the service because your subconscious gets it. (laughs) As a result of that, I ended up probably a year later teaching Sunday school, later on developed a Sunday school. And I've been asked, how has unity changed my life? And I can't really answer that because it's been an ongoing process since that day I took my four-year-old daughter to Sunday school. I remember uh, when my youngest daughter got married, and it was a, a lovely wedding. Uh, it was just uh, people that were their friends and their family, and it was really nice. And we were sitting at the table across from, um, I think it was her husband's uh, relatives of some kind, and she, she looked at me, And she looked at my ex-husband, and she said, how did you two ever get together? But we got together because there was something for me to learn through that marriage. It pushed me. It was not happy most of the time, but it pushed me deeper and deeper into unity teachings so that I learned them and began to apply them. Unity has five principles. The first one is there's only one presence and one power in the universe, and it's God, and it's absolute change, unchanging good. The second one is we are spiritual beings. We have that same essence within us that Jesus Christ had, and we're here to express it. And to help us express it, we use our power of thought. Have you ever thought about that we think 24 hours a day, 365 days a year? And our life experience comes out of our understanding and who we believe we are and who God is. So as we, and and then the next next principle is uh, prayer and meditation. We nourish our spiritual nature through prayer and meditation. And the last one is expression, to express that spiritual nature that we truly are through us. So getting all that, one of the things I discovered was it's really easier to do if you have a a support group. So I attended every unity class that I could that was given at my church or churches around. And from that, you have someone to talk about, and you can talk about the things that aren't working in your life so that they can help you find a way within yourself, a way to change that, to transform it, so that it's something that we let go and that energy we can use for something else. So that's part of my unity journey. Um, I'm quite old, so there's a lot to tell. But those are the basics. Using those principles in our everyday life and having a support group to help us through the tough times. Bless you, and that's the truth. Thank you, Donna, and thank you, Reverend Vi for beautiful testimonies, beautiful stories about your life and about how truth has transformed your life. We're going to go into this time of guided prayer and meditation. And I invite us to close our eyes in this moment as we are sitting comfortably and that we are breathing We're aware of our breath coming gently in and out of our body. We 
We breathe in peace. We breathe out calm. Peace be still. In this time of breath, in this time of peace, we come into an awareness of our divine appointment in this life. We come into an awareness of the eternity of our soul. And that each soul that comes here has a purpose and a journey. On this journey we learn so many things. We stretch and we grow. We do this become more aware and to grow in our consciousness. We take the truth. There is only one presence and one power active in the universe. God the good omnipotence. We hold God's good everywhere in our universe. We hold that in our lives in this moment. That God's good is working in, as, and through us. because we are created in that likeness and image. We are created in that perfection. God's good is in us. And through that good, we channel and focus our thoughts and thinking. We channel and focus on God's good. We experience the presence of God through our thoughts and our feelings and our actions. And we experience this presence open to this presence in our time of prayer and meditation. For it is here we become open to the possibility the enormous, universal possibility of God's love and wholeness. We take that in our breath. We live our truth. We live our truth as we connect with each other. We live our truth through our decisions in life, how we will act, how we will speak, We live our truth in how we give to our world.
we are here by divine appointment. Blessed in this moment by this ministry, God's presence, a loving community, and a bold world of infinite possibility. And as the music plays, we allow ourselves to experience the fullness. The fullness of God's love and wholeness in our lives. We experience the fullness the fullness of truth that is active in our universe we are here by divine appointment as we begin to bring our awareness back into this time and space continuum. We become ever aware of our gratitude for all that's been given to us. This time this space, this life, this truth, that the truth lives in and through us as we continue to open our hearts and our minds to God's will and God's way. say thank you God for all that you've given us thank you God and so it is Right where I am, I pray. 
to share a few announcements with you. If you have a prayer request or prayer concern, we invite you to call Silent Unity, which is available 365 days of the year. Um, they are available to pray with you, but we also invite you to call our church office. Our prayer chaplains are there to pray with you as well. They are ready and willing and able and have a desire to connect with you and to take your prayer concern um, into uh, up, up in prayer. Prayer is one of the cornerstones of the unity movement. We believe in affirmative prayer. We believe in the power of affirmative prayer. We want to thank you for your continued support. Uh, we thank you for sending your tithes and offerings uh, to our church office. We really appreciate that. We have other ways that you can also um, contribute and uh, send your tithes and offerings through our website. We have a donate button. It's safe, it's simple, it's easy, it's secure. And we also can take your credit cards over the telephone and uh, process, process them as well. We depend upon your support and we are grateful to you for uh, extending yourselves and for your faith in uh, this ministry. We give thanks and praise to you and to God for the ongoing support that is coming forward. We want you to be connected to our newsletter, and in order to do that, we need your email address. We do a newsletter every week on Fridays, and we also send out daily blessings. We send out um, Sunday messages and weekday messages. Please contact our church office so that we can put you on our email address. And so to also remind you of the programming that is going on through Zoom, we have our Sunday gathering every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. It's a time of prayer, a short message of sharing and connecting. And then we also have uh, the Thursday group study. I believe this coming Thursday is the last Thursday for that. It's trusting the process of change. That is a study based on uh, a book about transitions. Becky Rolkoll, our um, youth and family ministry director, is leading that. If you'd like to be a part of it, just call the church office and we can put you on that Zoom list. We thank you for being a part of our ministry and for tuning in and for sharing this time together. 
We want you to know that we love you and we miss you. We are looking forward to opening our doors again someday in the future and sharing this service together. So let's now go to our peace song and we will close out our service. The prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Amen. Have a great week. We love you.